All right, welcome back. Uh, there's a statement here from Alkana which says, but some prophets believe that they are more than pastor. Uh, their belief is wrong, right? So, uh, everyone are equal. No pastor is greater than prophet. No prophet is greater than pastor. We all are equal. Gifts and, you know, uh, gifts and talents are help us to equip each other in the church. Just because a pastor can prophesy and bring healing doesn't mean another pastor sitting in the village doing ministry is not is smaller than this person. Just because you come on TV doesn't mean that the pastor in the village is, you know, somebody who's not big enough in God's eyes. Just because we go to different countries and minister doesn't mean the pastor in the village is smaller. These are all things that we have come up with. All of us are equal in God's eyes. All of us have been called to certain roles in ministry. We do what God has given us. We will die. We will go and stand in front of Jesus. And if he says, "Good and well done, good and faithful servant, that's more than enough. That's our reward, right? So to answer your question, all of us are equal, right? Prophet, pastor. This uh, this whole thing of prophet being greater than pastors, all man-made things. Don't waste your time on that. Okay. Next, very important, page 20. Hearing from the Holy Spirit. Now, one of the top three questions that we get as pastors is, I feel this, I don't know if it's me or I don't know if it's the Holy Spirit. Yes? How many have felt uh, you have felt that in your own life? Yes. I don't know if it's me. Is it my mind, my thinking, or is it the Holy Spirit? Now, this portion will try and bring some clarity to this question. So if you look at your notes, you have a picture there. And I already mentioned this. We are spirit. We have a soul. And we live in a body. Now, the spirit is the real person who we are. Our soul is our mind, our will, our emotions. Right? Our, our, our mind, our thinking, our will, what we want to do, our emotions. You see, when, for example, when, uh, you know, when we are sad, we cry. Right? It is because our soul is burdened. It's our emotions inside. We're sad. And that emotions is released through tears. Right? Then we have, you know, sometimes some of them are, you know, just tired of life. They want to commit suicide. They want to live. Why? That's, a, that's an emotion inside that is stirring up. That can affect the mind. Then again, in turn, the result is killing the body right so our mind our will our emotions our spirit is who we really are now example lazarus was dead the rich man and lazarus story right the rich man died he went to hell but the beggar lazarus when he died he went up to abraham's bosom and there He's there enjoying in Abraham's bosom, but this person in hell was still was saying, oh, I'm going through all of this trouble. Just tell him to give me a drop of that wine that I used to have. He said, no. At least go and tell my brothers that, you know, to obey you and to follow you. He says, no. So what does it show there? Our mind, our will, our emotions is what makes us take decisions in our life. All of you here, maybe somebody shared about the Bible College, or you saw a, uh, uh, an announcement, you got a pamphlet, or you went online, searched for it. Right? Now, you used the faculty of your soul. You used your mind. You used your will. You used your emotions. Now, next semester, some of you may say, I'm not coming back ever again. Nobody's holding you back. You can go. That's because that's your will. 
your emotions. It's your, it's something that you have decided. Is anyone tying you up here and keeping you? Hopefully not. It's your will. It's your emotions, and and, and it's it's your mind that is making you to be here. Right now, everyone understand these three aspects, right? Spirit is who you really are. The spirit has a soul. So we, so spirit soul is interchangeable. And then we have a body. Now. The Holy Spirit is ministering to us. You see these arrows? We all have five senses. Everyone say five. Five senses. Feel. Right? So if you touch yourself, you feel it. Right? Two is you see. Three is you hear. You taste your food. Then you say whether it's good or bad. Then you smell. Right? These are the five senses we have. Now. When the Holy Spirit comes into us as believers, the, the Holy Spirit can use these five faculties to minister to us. Remember, the Holy Spirit testifies to our spirit. So, for example, you're leading worship. Let's, I'll just give you a few examples. Right? You're leading worship. And as you're... Or, okay, no, you're not leading worship. You're talking to a friend, saying, you know what, Sunday I went to church. This is what was happening. Just regular talks. Why don't we go play football next week? Are you free on Wednesday? And as you're talking, you feel, all of a sudden, you feel a pain in your right leg. Now, you don't have that pain. But all of a sudden, your right leg knee is burning. There's a pain there. Now, it's not normal. Right? Normally, it doesn't pain. There's no burning sense. All of a sudden, it's burning. Now, it could be the Holy Spirit is using your, your body, right, your faculty of feeling to minister to that person. Right? Now, so, so what would you do? The best thing to do at that moment is to say, hey, is there anything wrong with your knee? Your right knee. Says, oh, yes. Ten years back, while playing as a small child, I fell and I, you know, so I injured my knee. I had surgery. Now, every now and then it pains. Is it paining now? Yes. Can I pray for you? Yes. Now, what is the Holy Spirit doing? He's ministering to me. Holy Spirit is not coming and saying, Thus says the Father, the God of Israel, the God of Isaac and Jacob. I sent my son into this world to die on the cross. And through his through the cross, we find forgiveness of sins. Now tell this boy that sickness that he has on his knee will be healed in the name of Jesus. Now he's all of that you're not getting. All the Holy Spirit is using is sense of feel. You understood? Right? So in the supernatural hour. You may feel some things as you are praying for somebody else. You may feel a, a, a stirring in your spirit. Remember, Nehemiah was stirred in his spirit. He heard about the gates and was burned down. The walls was broken down. His spirit was stirred. Something is not right. I need to get this repaired. This is my city. This is God's city. Jerusalem is for us, it's our people, so we need to repair this. There was a stirring inside, right? So we see here, the stirring could be a continuous feeling. It could be a pressing in the spirit. Just like, you know, you have to do it. You have to do it right now. Right? A pressing. Now, the Holy Spirit can use the sense of feeling. So when you're praying, or when you're, you're reading God's word, he may make you feel some things. Right? It could be a physical feeling. When I, for example, when I read uh, the book of Revelations, you know, I was, I was preparing for Sunday sermons. All of a sudden, you would, you know, you'd feel this urge of strength coming inside you. I would feel like strength. I feel like hope. 
wow one day we will all go and be with the lord jesus we will see him face to face what more do we need that means death has been defeated now all of a sudden there's a hope now, i'm not thinking of hope i have hope but there's this greater hope the holy spirit is using the sense of feeling or it could be i may feel things in my body i may feel a tingling sensation right so the holy spirit can use our physical bodies remember in the supernatural hour there were times i said who has this problem who has this problem most of the time it is through feeling most of the time not always most of the time it's through feeling now you may ask how do i develop in it one of the ways i can develop in it is i need to be you know having this fellowship with the holy spirit the holy spirit, you should know okay this is the holy spirit speaking to me right so we journey along with him two is to see now this is the most common way that the holy spirit speaks to us right so he can give you a picture can give you like a movie he can remind you of the past he can remind you of things that you have done he can remind you of people who you have met you can see them in your mind's eye right so for example you are praying all of a sudden you think about a friend in school that you knew or a friend in college now it's the holy spirit bringing that picture to your mind through the faculty of seeing now this is the most common way right so we we close our eyes or we, even our eyes may be open but we can see something see that god is doing speaking to you and so you may see a picture you may see a movie there was a time when you know the first time i was given a preach and i remembered there was a, the holy spirit brought into my mind the pictures of the things that happened in bible college when i was studying in bible college it was like a reminder the holy spirit telling me see I, i'm doing it for you just i'm just seeing it all that you did in bible college all that you have learned i'm giving you opportunities now i saw i saw things that was in the past and then i also ask the holy spirit to show me things in the future god what is it you want me to do where is it that you want me to go give me a picture give me a, a, a you know something that i can see and i know that this is what you want me to do right so the holy spirit can speak through the faculty of seeing then the faculty of hearing now we have a physical ear all of us are hearing with our physical ear now as i am speaking the holy spirit may speak to you and you're hearing about something else i'm talking about holy spirit the holy spirit may speak to you about anything completely different something in the old testament or he may speak to you about a friend or anything your natural ear you're hearing the topic on holy spirit but your spiritual ears the holy spirit is speaking something very clearly into your heart what is when does remember jesus said this they have ears but they cannot hear what is what what is he trying to bring out he's saying they have ears they can hear but they don't have ears of the holy spirit they're not sensitive to the leading and the hearing of the holy spirit and the holy spirit says do this they are not able to hear it for example jesus like jesus is saying see i am here i am the messiah i'm telling you i'm the messiah you if you don't believe me look at the signs but they are hearing jesus but they're not really hearing him you get what i'm saying they're hearing jesus jesus is saying i am before abraham was i am he's showing them the miracles nobody walked on water nobody healed the blind nobody cleansed people of leprosy he, he's showing them they are hearing what jesus is saying but they didn't really hear him they had ears they did not hear you and i have ears but we can hear the words the leading of the holy spirit 
what does the book of John say? Those my sheep hear my voice. Now he's not talking about a natural hearing. He's talking about a spiritual hearing. When you and I wake up in the morning or whenever we are praying and worship time, we can hear the leading of the Holy Spirit. Right? So for example, you are each one of you are rostered to share the word in the morning. So one week, when you know that you're sharing next week, spend some time in God's presence. and Say, Lord, I'm going to share. I have to prepare. Give me a word. Give me something that I can hold on to. The Holy Spirit will speak. Now you're alone in that room, but you will hear a voice. That voice is in the Spirit. Example. The Apostle Paul is going on the road to Damascus. He saw a bright light. Right? And a voice came from heaven. Jesus, Apostle Paul said, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus who you are persecuting. Now get up and go to Damascus because I have chosen you to be a, a light to the Gentiles. And the Lord Jesus tells him, go and wait in Damascus. Now, this voice was both a physical voice. Some of them heard that voice, but it's an inner voice as well. It was the voice of the Holy Spirit, just speaking. It was the voice of Jesus speaking directly into his heart. So remember this. The Holy Spirit can use the faculty of hearing. Now, why is it that we can't hear sometimes? Because we are. my lecturer in college used to say this. There's a subject called gigo. G-I-G-O. Everyone say that? G-I-G-O. Oh. What is that? Garbage in, garbage out. What is garbage in? You're looking at all the things of the world, TV, all the garbage is going in, YouTube, Insta okay, Instagram, Facebook, all of that. It's good to have. I don't have all those things. But what happens? What is going in? Garbage. Garbage is going in. What is coming out of your mouth? Amen. Bless the Lord of my soul. Bless the Lord of my soul will come out in the morning. Once that is over, garbage is coming out. It's true. I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, putting each, I'm not, you know, mocking each one of us, but it's true. Right? If, if I keep, listening and hearing and filling my mind with garbage, how will I hear the work of the Holy Spirit? What's happening? My mind is fully crowded. I'm opening the Bible to read. All of a sudden, what I saw on Facebook is coming to my mind. Okay, forget that. Uh, let me pray. I close my eyes. What I had for dinner last night is coming to my mind. Okay, let me sing, let me sing some songs, worship songs. I start playing the guitar. What I, you know, something else is coming to my mind. What is tomorrow's work? What work to do tomorrow? Yes or no? Right? So our mind gets clouded. Now, not only that. So for example, for me, okay, when I wake up to pray, the first thing that comes to my mind is, if it's a Friday, okay, Bible college, then go here. Then do this. This is the person I should meet. These are my schedule. Finish work. I finish at this time, 6 o'clock. Then go back. There's a life group. Go visit the life group. After visiting life group, go back home. Play with the children. Today's Friday. Then go to sleep. Saturday, big day. I have to go out. I have to visit a family. Go all the way. That's, it's normal. Right? But I have to tell myself. No. All that is later. Take it out. The task for the day is all later. So I have, to, I have to tell myself, clear my mind, say, God, this time is for you. Now, remember, while praying in between, suddenly, I didn't add that point in the sermon notes. <laughs> It'll come. But again, you go back and you say, God, Holy Spirit, help me. See, just because we are, because I'm teaching about Holy Spirit, teaching about prayer, doesn't mean we are all perfect. It comes to us also. 
all the thoughts, right? Uh, what to do, who to meet, what did I preach on Sunday? No, right? the regular things that I have to do. Sometimes you sit for prayer. Oh, October holidays are starting. Where to go this time? Where to take the children and go? I already went to this place. I already went. That happened this morning. Deciding which for five minutes, I'm deciding where to go instead of praying. Should I go here? Should I go there? Is it is it okay? Will it will the weather be good? Then I had to tell, oh God, Holy Spirit, please help me. So I had to tell my mind, change my mind. I had to do it. If I keep thinking one hour, I can think of where to go. Yes or no? Forget one hour, two hours also. I can keep closing my eyes and thinking of going on a holiday, vacation. I'm sitting on the mountains, enjoying. Two hours also I can think. But there is where it comes discipline. I have to tell the Holy, I have to tell myself, tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. These are things that I should keep away. Now, it's not a big sin, but it can come as a hindrance to our lives. And so if I want to hear from God, what will I hear? The Holy Spirit will say, go to Pondicherry. Okay, good. But what is the gain? What is it that I'm learning for this two hours of prayer that I've set aside? What am I learning? Nothing. I might as well have slept. Got better sleep and woken up late. But I got to discipline myself. If I want to hear from myself, I need to remove the things that is clouding my mind. So we don't study Gigo. I don't have Facebook. I don't have Instagram. I don't use it. I don't have it doesn't interest me at all I, I don't know somebody came and asked me why you don't put anything on your status I said you're so worried about what is the status for I don't know what is that Then one person came up to me and said pastor you saw my status I said I don't uh, when I go home I don't use the phone everything my wife and children use I throw it away I don't touch the phone I don't care what is in your status. What I don't even know what I'm doing. I have so much of work. Who's going to sit and look at status? So I, I don't know. It doesn't interest me. Right? It just doesn't. So because now the reason is I want to make sure that I'm in line with what the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. You get what I'm saying? I don't I try not to crowd my mind. Now, when it comes to the scripture, I love to crowd my mind. I keep thinking, I keep asking questions. That's good. I keep questioning the Holy Spirit. Why did you put a tree when you know that they're going to eat it? Even now I ask the Holy Spirit. Tell me. Now it, it sounds like a, you know, I'm just questioning the Holy Spirit. No, I'm just having fellowship. I'm trying to hear from him. You get what I'm saying? Or uh, ask simple questions from the scriptures. Why did you wait till 30 years old? You could have started when you're 20, no, Jesus? You wait till 30. Why? Why only three years ministry, three and a half years? Why did all, you know Jesus only go in that small area? Why did he choose 12, not 20? So many things. Just keep talking. What am I doing? I'm, I'm keeping myself in a place of readiness to hear from the Holy Spirit. Now, whether he answers or no, that is secondary. But I am speaking to him. Right? Fourthly, is taste. Now, when we eat something, we have a taste. This is a very rare thing that the Holy Spirit uses, but he can use. Remember, I think it was um, to Jeremiah, if I'm not wrong. Uh, you know, he eats the paper and the paper is salt. It was like bitter. The paper was bitter. It was to bring, out, bring across a point, right? So the Holy Spirit can use the sense of taste. Now, don't say, Holy Spirit, I want you to speak to me through the sense of taste. Every day I'm eating this uh, vegetarian. Now I want the taste of non-vegetarian. The Holy Spirit will say, go outside, eat non-vegetarian and come. You get what I'm saying? Don't put demands on the Holy Spirit. He is God. He will speak the way he wants to speak. Right? So, but then this is one of the ways. Lastly, smell. Again, one of the ways he can speak to us. Uh, 
very rarely uh, or, you know the lord has ministered through smell but i love this passage which really is encouraging paul writes and he says you and i are the aroma of christ the word aroma means a beautiful smell wherever we go we bring the fragrance of the lord jesus into that place we are or into people's lives the holy spirit can speak to us in a certain way and we can sense his presence the smell of his presence uh just bringing strength bringing joy into our lives right so these are five faculties that the holy spirit can speak to us and and you and i must be ready and willing right everyone understood this part this is very important right we've got five senses the holy spirit uses those five senses to speak to us everyone understood yes okay uh just the last portion quickly we'll finish that in ministry what the holy spirit does now we looked at the work of the holy spirit in the life of the believer sorry the unbeliever the believer and now what about the work of the holy spirit in the ministry now some of us are called to be pastors apostles teachers prophets whatever worship leaders what is the work of the holy spirit there he gives us power to do ministry acts 118 he will when the holy spirit comes upon us we will receive power to be a witness right so that is very important if we are trying to do ministry on our own strength it's going to be very difficult many times many leaders have crumbled under pressure said i can't do this right so we need to go back depending on the holy spirit too we've got the gifts of the holy spirit very important paul writes in first corinthians chapter 12 he lists down the entire gifts of the holy spirit there are nine gifts anyone know all the nine gifts of the holy spirit only one person knows it everyone know all nine okay the bible says in towards the end he said earnestly desire the best gift now what is the best gift there love, love. sorry love is not a gift pray in tongue pray love is pray, a... pray in tongue pray in pray tongue in okay what else wisdom okay we need to clarify this very important to understand first corinthians chapter 12 see paul is writing about all the gifts then he goes towards the end he says but eagerly desire the greater gifts now let me explain this to you i think you may have heard this but we'll talk more about it in the gifts of the holy spirit do we have a chapter on that the gifts of the holy yeah we have chapter 10 we'll talk about the gifts but let me just uh, point out this see the holy spirit comes with all nine gifts we are to flow in all these gifts he's giving us the opportunity he's giving us um A, a, a way to flow in all of these gifts so he's talking to the believers and he's saying earnestly desire the greater gift so for example if i am going to a place and i'm pray and you know or i'm going to the hospital i want to pray for somebody who's sick what is the gift that i need is it any use to start praying in tongues there no use if i i meet somebody right you're meeting somebody they're feeling very low they're feeling discouraged in life what is the gift that you will ask the holy spirit for healing prophecy yeah word of knowledge yes very good healing not really because it's more of you know he's feeling low he's feeling sad right? discouraged so a prophetic word or a word of knowledge will bring encouragement to him right so the word e desire earnest gift is the gifts are there we are to grow in these gifts but when i am ministering to someone i need to ask the holy spirit to give me the right gift at the right time it is the ability to use the gift that god is giving you at that situation everyone understand that right 
And we'll talk more about that in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to waste, uh, not waste, but I don't want to spend too much time there. Uh, chapter 10 is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We'll go more in detail, right? Okay. Then the Holy Spirit releases signs, mighty signs and wonders, miracles that we see in ministry. It is not because the person is a prophet or the person is a apostle. Now, God uses people to do what he wants to do. Yes, there are gifts, there is a grace, all of that is there. But the healing, the signs, wonders and miracles happen because of the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not the person. The gift is there, but it's not the person. Can the person bring healing? It is the Holy Spirit who does the miracles. Okay. The Holy Spirit brings words to communicate the wisdom of God. Now, in ministry, we must be able to teach and present the word of God in the right way. Now, for example, somebody calls you, now you go back home and they say, hey, you've gone to Bible college, you finished one semester, come and preach. Now, you need the wisdom to understand what to preach. Don't start off with Adam, end with Jesus' second coming. The whole Bible in one sermon. What will happen? The people will be sitting there wondering, oh, he's learned all the subjects. No, we need the wisdom, right? Okay, choose the topic, how to communicate this truth. 25 minutes, there should be some takeaway from this message, right? Then the Holy Spirit gives us godly counsel. We have counseling, right? What to do, when to do it. I'm going through this problem. I don't know what step to take. But the Holy Spirit doesn't give regular counsel. He gives godly counsel. He can counsel us and lead us on what to do, what not to do. Right? And it's our responsibility to be obedient to that. I can tell you many, many, many situations when I started into when I started into ministry, where the enemy was just trying to get me away from it, but because of godly counsel, the Holy Spirit just telling me, "Don't do this. This is not right." I thank God that I was able to listen to it. You know, when you start off, you're very vulnerable. We may make the wrong decisions. We may do wrong things, but the the wisdom of God, the godly counsel by the Holy Spirit enables us to take the right path. The Holy Spirit empowers us to write on people's hearts. You know, sometimes you can preach a sermon for one hour, nothing may happen. But if that Holy Spirit can use that 10 minute sermon and write it on your hearts, meaning he can make an impact which the enemy cannot steal. Think of this example. John the Baptist, he went to the River Jordan. Why everyone are coming to him? Strangely dressed. Eating locusts and wild honey. He look, how does he look? He looks like you know, a desert man. And you've got the high priests wearing those 12 tribes. You know, standing with all clean clothes and wonderfully. But here this man is in the desert. Everyone are following him. Why? Because he was able to write into people's hearts. He was able to really speak into their hearts. You understand? Right? And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He can take a two-minute, five-minute sermon of yours and write it into your heart, people's heart. Okay? He empowers us to be able to he empowers us to be able to minister to be ministers of the new testament of the new covenant right he has given us a more glorious ministry Paul is writing again to the Corinthians i think in second corinthians he says the ministry of the old was glorious how much more is the ministry of the glorious second corinthians 3 8 how much Greater is the new ministry, the, 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 the everlasting covenant. The ministry of the new covenant is much greater than that of the old. And then we do ministry by the Holy Spirit. So, important. 
as believers, as ministers of God, when some of us may be stepping into ministry, some of us may just go back and get into a workplace. That's fine. You can still use these principles. It's not like the Holy Spirit is saying, okay, now you're in the workplace, you're doing secular jobs, so let me concentrate on those in ministry. No. You can still walk in all of these gifts wherever we are. Right? Finally, in resurrection, very important, Romans 8, 11. Let's read that. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the spirit who gives life to you. The role of the Holy Spirit in the life of you and I as believers, when we pass on, when this physical body is put into the ground, there will come a time the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken our bodies and we will be raised from the dead. That is our seal. That is our assurance. And so the work of the Holy Spirit is so powerful in each of our lives. It's important that we obey Him. We learn to walk in His timing. We learn to hear from Him. And eventually, as we do that, we grow in the things of God. Amen? All right. Any questions, any thoughts before we close? Okay. All right. Would anyone like to pray? Close and pray. Go ahead. Anyone? Lord, thank you for teaching us about the Holy Spirit, Lord Father. But as we are learning this truth, Lord Father, help us to apply these truths in our lives, Lord Father. Help us to be sensitive to your Spirit and help us to grow in relationship with you, with the Holy Spirit more and more each and every day, O Lord Father. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Paul as well. Lord, as he's coming and teaching us, I, we pray that you bless him, his family, and bless the ministry that he is doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right, thank you, everyone. See you next week. God bless.